The photo is one of the most iconic of the 20th century. The date is April 16, 1912, and it shows young newspaper boy Ned Parfit holding the banner headline of that day's London Evening News, which reads, Titanic Disaster, Great Loss of Life. The sinking of the Titanic in the frigid North Atlantic on April 15, 1912, was undoubtedly the most famous shipping tragedy of all time. More than 1,500 of the estimated 2,224 passengers and crew on board perished in the sinking. The unthinkable had happened. A famously unsinkable ship had sunk. The exact location of the shipwreck remained a maritime mystery for decades after that. That was until finally, after many failed attempts to find the wreck by other expeditions, a Franco-American team led by Robert Ballard succeeded in locating where the famous ship had come to rest. It was at over 12,000 feet below the surface and had only been made possible with the help of remote submersibles. It was assumed that the incredible discovery of the Titanic wreckage in 1985 by Robert Ballard and his expedition team had been a purely scientific effort. However, this was not actually the case. A lot more than just the location of the Titanic shipwreck was at stake for this expedition. And it turns out, the US Navy had actually launched the mission with a top secret objective in mind. The Truth The truth regarding the 1985 expedition that found the Titanic finally emerged in 2018. Declassified information meant that Robert Ballard could reveal that the team had in fact been part of a secret U.S. military mission to investigate two sunken nuclear submarines at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Ballard would state, They did not want the world to know that, so I had to have a cover story. Back in the 1980s, Ballard was a commander in the U.S. Navy and a scientist at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Massachusetts. Ballard had been building an underwater research vessel to realize his lifelong dream of finding the Titanic. It was his obsession. However, Ballard was unable to procure adequate funding for the project, so he approached the U.S. Navy for help. Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Submarine Warfare Ronald Thunman was receptive, but a bargain was struck. The Navy would offer Ballard the funding and opportunity to search for the Titanic, but on one critical condition. He would have to first explore the wrecks of the USS Thresher and the USS Scorpion. The USS Thresher and USS Scorpion. The Thresher and Scorpion were two American nuclear subs that sank in the 1960s under mysterious circumstances. Ballard noted that the US Navy knew precisely where the subs were located. However, there was much interest in the nuclear weapons that were on the Scorpion at the time it sank. The Navy also wanted to investigate the impact of the nuclear reactors on the marine environment. Another reason the American military wanted to investigate the two sunken submarines was to analyze whether their sinking had been possibly due to any foul play by an enemy state, namely the Soviet Union. But the exploration of the two subs needed to be done as quietly as possible. The US Navy had its reasons. This was still during the Cold War, after all. The Navy wanted to ensure that the investigation of the two nuclear submarines be done without ever having the Soviets following the expedition or even knowing about it. Hence the need to cover up the real intent of the team by very publicly stating that its sole purpose was to locate the Titanic wreck. That's crazy. Thunman would later speak about his meeting with Ballard and recall how Ballard had told him, quote, all my life I've wanted to go find the Titanic. Thunman was taken aback by Ballard's candid reason for approaching the Navy for funding. He responded to Ballard by saying, quote, Come on, this is a serious, top-secret operation. Find the Titanic? That's crazy. It was actually Ballard himself who suggested the cover story, because he believed the Titanic wreck site was located somewhere between the Thresher and Scorpion submarines. Ballard would recall how he was the one who suggested to Thunman that the Navy should tell the world that they'd be looking for the Titanic. Thunman thought that Ballard's cover story idea was crazy, but he had this to say to the ambitious oceanographer and explorer. If you do your mission, I don't care what you do with the rest of your time. In Ballard's opinion, it was a great cover story since the media were entirely oblivious to the covert nature of the expedition. That, in turn, meant the Soviets also remained in the dark regarding what the Ballard expedition was getting up to in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean off Newfoundland. The Navy funding and technical expertise included that for the remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, which was essential for the underwater expedition. The Titanic wreck, as well as those of the two nuclear subs, were located too far underwater for a human diver to explore them. Instead, the remotely operated vessel was needed to travel so deep underwater and take the necessary footage. The cutting-edge underwater equipment was developed at the Deep Submersions Laboratory at Woods Hole, thanks to funds granted by the Office of Naval Research. 
partnering with Ballard as the co-head of the expedition was Dr. Jean-Louis Michel, Director of Engineering and Technology for I. Fremer, or the French Research Institute for Exploitation of the Sea, based in Toulon, France. Ballard would always insist that the expedition was a joint achievement with the French. Michel would later state that the French team's agreement was with Ballard directly, not with the institution at Woods Hole or the U.S. Navy. Michel would recall how the partnership with Ballard commenced in late 1983 and went through several stages. The French had to determine the feasibility of the project. Eiffremer decided to do a historical study, a computer study, an operational study, and a weather study regarding the expedition's feasibility. By 1984, Michel told Ballard that the French were ready to commit. What's interesting is that once Ballard and Michel's expedition team had finished exploring the two sunk nuclear submarines, they had just 12 days left in the trip to search for and locate the Titanic. 12 days. Ballard would reveal how he pondered over every detail of what he knew about the Titanic, including where witnesses and maritime experts thought the ship sank and where the ship's lifeboats were found. He would state how his gut told him that the wreck wasn't located where everyone thought it was. His strategy was not to seek out the Titanic wreckage itself, but to instead try and accurately calculate its debris field. Ballard compared it to being akin to wanting to photograph a deer hiding in the winter. One wouldn't search for the deer itself in winter, but rather look for its footprints and follow its movements that way. The wreckage was found on the eighth day of the ballard Michel expedition search of the ocean for it. At 2 a.m. on September 1st, 1985, Ballard, Michel, and several crew members watched as the robotic submersible delivered images of the Titanic's boiler. It was the first anyone had seen of the famous cruise ship in over 75 years. Quote, We were at the very spot Titanic sank. We were there, Ballard would recall. The expedition crew would also note how the night the Titanic was discovered was eerily similar to the night it sank. The ocean was incredibly calm, and the sky was moonless. Ballard would go on to say how incredibly excited he and his team were when they found the Titanic. He would reminisce by stating, quote, We naturally were very excited because it was a tough job. We got it, scoring the winning goal at the buzzer. However, the mood soon turned quite somber, as the implications of the Titanic tragedy quickly set in after the discovery had been made. Ballard would recall, quote, we realized we were dancing on someone's grave, and we were embarrassed. The mood, it was like someone took a wall switch and went click. We became sober, calm, respectful. And we made a promise to never take anything from that ship, and to treat it with great respect. Ballard would make an analogy by stating, quote, You don't go to Gettysburg with a shovel, which was a reference to the immense battle that occurred in Gettysburg between Union and Confederate forces in July 1863 at the height of the American Civil War in which thousands of men lost their lives. 12,000 feet down. The discovery of the famous shipwreck received significant press attention worldwide. As with the sinking in April 1912, the ship being found made front page news across the world in September 1985. The New York Times proclaimed, quote, wreckage of Titanic reported discovered 12,000 feet down. The paper would report that the famous ship's remains were found at the bottom of the ocean by what was called, quote, a team of American and French researchers. The American researchers were later clarified as being scientists from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. A later story by the New York Times about the expedition featured a series of denials from officials about the team. Navy spokesman Captain Brent Baker said that the project was simply to test if the oceanographic system worked, while Dr. Robert Spindle, the head of the Woods Hole Ocean Engineering Department, denied any covert military involvement, quote, there was nothing classified, Spindle told the New York Times. Ballard would later attempt to suppress the wreck's precise coordinates, but they were leaked. This resulted in many treasure hunters visiting the site, salvaging thousands of objects from the debris and leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Since 2012, the wreckage has been protected under the UNESCO Convention on the Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage. While fewer people have been ravaging the wreck in recent years, the ocean itself has continued working uninterrupted in slowly but surely dismantling the ship's remains. Knowledge In the end, the expedition was a win-win for the U.S. Navy and for the man whose ambition was to locate the wreck of an old luxury ship. Ironically, in an expedition that was a covert operation by the American Navy to dupe the Soviets, the date on which the Titanic wreck was found, September 1st, was a day being celebrated as the National Day of Knowledge in the USSR. It was just another irony of the Cold War, and just another footnote to the many footnotes that comprise the never-ending mystique of that greatest ocean tragedy of all, 
the sinking of the Titanic. <laughs>